Yeah, what a hard-fought battle. You know, the one thing I think that our team understand, understands, excuse me, especially our upperclassmen, is that Lafayette does a, just a phenomenal job um, playing with a lot of energy, playing with a nonstop attitude. And we've understood this for a long time, that Coach Broadhead and his teams, it doesn't really matter how many quarters they played, how many games they played. They don't stop. They keep fighting. They keep working hard. And so I think understanding that is part of the battle when, you, when you're in a, this type of situation here in postseason. And so I'm really proud of my kids. Like we got some big stops. We made some critical free throws you know, down there towards the end when the game got really close. And uh, for that, I'm thankful. And I have a lot of the upperclassmen leadership really to thank for that. Thanks, Coach. This time we'll open up to questions. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. And please identify yourself before asking the question. Kevin Foote, Daily Advertiser. Coach, all three games this year were really close. I mean, was this one in terms of uh, similar in how it's played and decided by the same things, or, or was this just No, uh, I, you know, our game plan was, was different this time than it was uh, – w- well, it wasn't that much different, to be honest with you. In some regards, we started out with one particular game plan. It wasn't working well when we played at their place, so we switched it up. But game plan overall, no. Um, there, there wasn't really a change. It was more about us making adjustments from our standpoint of doing a better job of containing, not getting, allowing those opportunities in the paint. And they still got a lot of great opportunities in the paint, to be honest with you. That's an area that we've struggled in. And so outside of that, um, and then really breaking down defensively how we're going to get some of our offensive looks. You know, they do a good job themselves of protecting the paint. And so where we're going to get our offensive looks and how we're going to execute against their defense, Gary's defense is, is pretty darn good, uh, was also important to us. So I would tell you the two areas that we definitely – talked about was doing a better job of protecting in the paint against their offense and then us executing offensively against a pretty good defense. Next question. We'll go to the back in the middle. Hey coach, hey, Steffi Sorensen, ESPN. Um, I know that Brooke didn't particularly shoot well from the floor, two of 12, but nine points, 10 rebounds. Can you just describe what she brings to this team and what do you like from her? You know, I constantly have to remind Brooke that she is our best two-way player. I'm like, you're our Clay Thompson kid. Like, you are a great two-way player. She generally has the toughest assignments, guard assignments to guard, and then we're asking her to score as well. And she's really kind of stepping into her own. She's had to play last year as a freshman behind two kids that were all conference, either preseason or all conference in the end. So, you know, this kind of happened exponentially for her where she was not playing at all to stepping in the limelight, but it's not anything that she wasn't used to, even though it's high school. Um, from before and what Brooke brings is a grit and a toughness and that's something that you know is, is a part of our culture and just is added to especially when you have a young woman who's just a sophomore coming in um, and being able to really help as as a kind of an auxiliary player with everything that she does for us and I think a lot of people recognize that I mean her and Zelor Massaqua get a lot of keep alive they're very um, kind of get after it kids but Brooke Holly, for sure, has been a big piece of our, our puzzle, especially those nights when we're not having great shooting nights. Brooke seems to be on, but specifically aiding Erica May defensively for that starting five. It's, it's been critical to have a kid like Brooke Holly. Additional questions? We'll go to the back on the right. Yeah, Mitch Holzer with ESPN. And just overall as your team, to not shoot it from the field and still kind of gut it out and to win it. Um, what about the mentality to do that and how that carries into tomorrow? I think that's the funnest part about watching how this team has evolved. Uh, you know, we're one of the top three-point shooting teams, and obviously we have one of the best three-point shooters in the country as well. But with that being said, we're still one of the top three-point shooting teams. And we've relied so heavily on that. That's really been a piece of our identity for me as a head coach since I've been at Texas State. So being able to get your team to buy into defense and defensive stops and other ways to score can be really difficult. And what I found with this particular group that's made them very special is that they slowly have bought into understanding that if we get defensive stops, it gives us more offensive opportunities. So it's okay if those shots don't fall, but we've got to get those big stops. And um, I think once that they, once they turned the corner, understood that it's made it a little bit easier for them to kind of shake off, you know, those nights that we're not having great three-point shooting nights. You know, we always have a goal. Um, for every single game, there's always an offensive goal and there's defensive goals as well. And I think what we've recognized is those times we don't hit those offensive goals, if we exceeded the defensive goals from both positions, then we've had a successful night. And that's how this team has evolved within this particular season. And I think we saw that here during the tournament, to be honest with you. I don't feel like we're shooting the three ball really well, but we're getting some pretty big stops, hitting free throws down, you know, uh, as, as we get later into the game. And that's been very important for us. 
Coach, your team was 13 of 13 from the line. What what are your goals coming in in terms of like free throw? Do you want to? I know every coach has a specific goal when it comes to free throws. Were you were you surprised that you guys didn't miss or? Uh, I, I wasn't surprised. I think the team can tell you this. We started in this conference as being one of the worst free throw shooting teams and the best three point shooting teams. And I and I think they got tired of me saying that all the time, especially this upperclassman group. Our goal this entire year was to hold that number one spot, and we didn't hit it to maybe about late, um, maybe the, the second week before we hit the closing week. In the end, Troy got us, and I let him know that um, they finished at top in the free throw category. But one thing I've always trusted with this, this particular team is that if we've given them a goal, they do everything they can to meet it. And we do take a lot of pride in the fact that free throws are important for us. Um, you know, we had a really rough game on the road against UTA, and I told him, you know, any other day I never would have thought we would be 11 for 21 from the free throw line. And I think they really took that to heart, and we focused, we regrouped, we shot some more free throws, and we talked again about trying to reclaim that number one spot. We, you know, we fell short, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, being number one in the postseason.